So let's say I want to oxidize this alkene over here by oxidative cleavage. So cleavage literally just means cut off this double bond right here. So I cut it off. Okay. So based on the oxidation principle, oxidation means you literally add in a oxygen, just like that. Okay. Similarly over here, you add in an oxygen, like so. Okay, and also in the process, what remove hydrogen. So you remove hydrogen and add oxygen, you will get OH, just like so. Okay, and similarly for this one, okay, after oxidative cleavage oxidize, okay, we split these two apart. And like just now, as I told you, this one we just have to add in the oxygen to the C double to, to the carbon atom over here. Okay, so this one let's let's just clear it away. Okay, what about this? Let's examine this case, the third case over here. What will happen to this? Now for this case, because there are two hydrogens, we will then remove the two hydrogens. Okay, let's put this aside over here first. Oxidation is about removing hydrogen or adding oxygen, which is why you will get a carbon dioxide over here. And then if you also add in an oxygen over here, you will get carbon dioxide and water. Say for methyl benzene, oxidation means removing these two hydrogen atoms for them to be replaced or added with an oxygen over here. And then this H will add in and slot in an oxygen as well, forming what we call benzoic acid. Say for ethyl benzene, okay, what we do is we remove the hydrogen. After that, we add in the oxygen like, like just now. However, for this case, we have to remember that you have to get rid of this excess carbon over here. And what will happen is that you will then continue and add on the OH over here and form benzoic acid like what we did just now. But also at the same time, this or the hydrogen will be removed and replaced with oxygen and you will form carbon dioxide just like that. Even for alcohols and carbonyl compounds when undergoing iodoform tests, which is also an oxidation process, we literally remove this hydrogen here, okay, and then ox further oxidize this to form a oxygen double bond. And after that, this one will be further oxidized too, to oxygen. Same for aldehydes. Save for ketones. And lastly, my favorite, because this is oddly satisfying. If you notice, primary alcohols can be oxidized further to form aldehydes, like this, which can further be oxidized to form carboxylic acids. And the same for secondary alcohols, Okay, we can oxidize them directly to ketones, just like this. So the bottom line is, because oxygen is about removing hydrogen or adding oxygen, you need at least a hydrogen atom attached to the carbon atom in order for oxidation to take place, which is why tertiary alcohols and phenols cannot be oxidized. So far, so good. Okay, now here's the cool thing about the second principle reduction. If oxidation is the addition of oxygen slash or removal of the hydrogen, reduction is the literal opposite of it, which means you just have to add hydrogen or remove oxygen. Now in the reduction of alkene, or also known as the hydrogenation of alkene, what we do is we break this pi bond, okay, and then we literally add on, okay, we add on two hydrogen atoms like this, and this becomes a single bond. Now, why don't you try? With this principle, how would the reduction of CN look like? So what we can do is that we can separate these two things and because reduction is about adding hydrogen, we literally just have to add in hydrogen. So it will become CH2 and H2. And what about amides? To reduce an amide, we literally just have to remove the oxygen and then add in the hydrogen forming CH2 and H2. So for both acid and alkaline hydrolysis, nitrogen is usually present and if it's an acid hydrolysis, it literally means using an acid and an alkali for alkaline hydrolysis as reagents respectively. So 
CN is hydrolyzed to COOH and NH4+, and CONH2 is hydrolyzed to COOH. Because they are in acidic conditions with a lot of H plus protons surrounding it, the carboxyl groups are protonated. But in the case of an alkaline hydrolysis, the carboxyl groups are deprotonated and hence has the negative charges on the oxygen atom. Now comes to the hydrolysis which we are more familiar with. Hydro means water and lysis means break apart. So hydrolysis is the act of throwing in a water molecule to break something apart. In this case, it's a bond. So for example, we can break this ester using this water molecule over here. How? So this is the ester bond over here, and then we just break it, hydrolyze it, and then the OH here will then go on to complete the carboxylic acid on this side, and the H will go on to complete the alcohol on this side. And the reagents and conditions for this are dilute H2SO4 and heat under reflux. We can also hydrolyze an acyl chloride using water. So we can just take this apart, and then form a carboxylic acid. Take note of this reaction, okay? This is something that people always, always forget. And in an alkaline condition using NaOH, it is also considered hydrolysis, but just that again, the carboxylic acid is deprotonated. And just like the oxidation and reduction relationship, condensation is the opposite of hydrolysis. Instead of using a water molecule to break something apart, we are now merging substances together and releasing a water molecule in the process. So now, we merge a carboxylic acid and an alcohol to produce an ester and a water molecule, with the carboxylic acid contributing the OH and the alcohol contributing the H. Just remember that both need to contribute equitably, aka their fair share. So for example, COOH has 4 atoms, so it contributes half, which is 2. OH has 2 atoms, so it contributes half, which is 1. This is also the same for acyl chlorides reacting with alcohols to form esters, and acyl chlorides reacting with a phenoxide ion. And lastly, don't forget about aldehydes and ketones condensing with 2,4-DNPH and releasing the water molecule too. Alright, now that we are done with the more general reactions, aka, let's recap, reduction, oxidation, what else? Condensation and hydrolysis, right? Things get a little trickier when it comes down to the actual more specific reactions. It starts off like very easy, right? Electrophilic addition, that's for alkenes. Okay, but then however, after that as we go on, there's electrophilic substitution, there's nucleophilic addition, there's nucleophilic substitution. This is where a lot of people have a hard time remembering like the reagents, the conditions, and also especially the reaction mechanism. Where the reaction starts with the word electrophilic, it means that the species in the first step being attacked is an electrophile. And on the other hand, a reaction that starts with nucleophilic means that the species in the first step involves a nucleophile attacking the other substance. For electrophilic addition, the CC double bond is electron rich, hence the reagents that is attacked is the electrophile, such as HBr, Br2 or H2. Electrophilic addition is literally also breaking the pi bond like a barricade and it opens up and we can plug in the atoms onto the carbon atoms like so. For electrophilic substitution, remember the first step involves the reagent plus the catalyst to generate the electrophile to be attacked by the electron rich benzene ring. And as the word substitute suggests, it literally means substituting the invisible hydrogen attached on a benzene ring with the electrophile that we want, such as nitrobenzene, methylbenzene, and 2-bromomethylbenzene. But do take note of this exception. Only bromine water, Br2 aqueous, gives 2 4 6 substitution for phenols and phenylamines only. On the other hand, in a nucleophilic addition reaction, the first step involves generating the nucleophile from the catalyst. The reagents and conditions that we are taught is HCN with trace KCN, where HCN is the reagent and KCN is the catalyst. So the first step involves generating CN from the KCN, the catalyst and not the HCN. And with that, just like the word addition suggests, we literally add H to the O and CN directly to the carbon atom of the CO double bond. And if we are talking about nucleophilic substitution, well, I think you know the drill by now. We literally substitute one functional group for another, such as from a halogen to an alcohol. For our 11th and final principle, acid base is actually pretty simple. It's just based on protonation or deprotonation. If you want to protonate something, just use an acid like dilute H2SO4 as the reagent. And if you want to react a substance with a base such as NaOH, the substance will be deprotonated. 
and many of you always think that amines plus COOH gives you an ester, but it does not. Amines react with carboxylic acids in an acid-based reaction. Or as you can see here, the H from the COOH is transferred to the NH2 in a simultaneous protonation and deprotonation process. So please, please, please write down and remember that it is only acyl chloride that condenses with amines to form amides and not carboxylic acids. So ladies and gentlemen, those are the 11 principles of organic chemistry. Oh, my grab food is here. But anyways, I prepared three questions for you guys. So do try them out and see whether you can apply whatever you've learned in this video and the answers will be in the description. See ya.